Today we're gonna composite three photos and create some light effects. Hey there, my name is Ali and today we're gonna create really some interesting light using only few photos. Okay, I'll start by dragging our first photo, which is this one. The photos, I'm gonna link them actually in the description below. Okay, let me stretch it out a little bit. Okay. Uh, one more thing I guess I wanna do is stretch it down a little bit, something like that. Okay. Okay, let me show you. This is first, it's uh, 3000 width by 3500. Okay. Now I need to get rid of uh, this man. So I'm gonna go to my clone stamp tool. Then I'm gonna click. Uh, it won't work just because it's not rasterized. I need to rasterize it first. Rasterize layer. Then I'm gonna make a selection like that. And then I'm gonna clone stamp from here maybe. And just remove it. Okay, looks good. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to fix the sky. There is this very bright area, then this area, then uh, I don't like it like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the trees. The trees are actually fine because they are somehow framing my house. But the branches and all these things are not really nice. I want a clear background behind the house so the house looks more clear. Okay, I made this selection. I'm also gonna make another one here and there. Okay, now I wanna save this selection I made. There are like Photoshop options to save. But I don't like them. What I do is I just create a new layer, then Alt Backspace. Now I have this. If I want to bring this selection anytime, I just Control or Command and click. I get the selection I want and just close this one for now. Okay, let's jump in and get our second photo, which is the sky. Uh, I'll make it a little bit big, something like that. Okay, then let me click on this selection and add layer mask. Now I place the sky where I want, but it has still these some. Let me first unlink it, make it a little bit bigger down. So we have some room to work with down there. And we have a problem with these sharp edges. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to stand on the layer mask, go to my brush, get any one of my cloud brushes, this one. Okay, and with a very low opacity, like 30%, something like that. If I paint black, it removes the cloud. If I paint white, it brings it back. So I'm gonna make sure I get rid of this edge here and there. Then I'm gonna change to white. I press X to change the color. And on white, I'm gonna paint over some of these clouds. It's okay if they overlap the house. And some on top of these trees as well. So it looks like it's faded into the clouds. Okay, I guess now we're good. Let's start. I'll rasterize this one. Rasterizing will make your file actually go faster if you have a slow computer like mine. Okay, I need to make this much darker. So I'm going to go to curves adjustment layer. I'm going to link it down below. I'm going to make the shadows darker. Make the highlights dark. Something like that, and then a little bit more dark from here. Okay, looks good, but we need to match this one with that one down below. One thing I want to do, if you look at the tree now, it's too bright. So I'm going to stand on the layer with the tree. I'm going to go to the burn tool. The burn tool makes things darker. I'm going to make it on midtones. And I'm just going to make it a little bit darker to match the environment better. Okay. To match, this one is like now dark and now this one is a morning shot. 
So what I'm gonna do is I want to make this also dark. I'm gonna go to brightness contrast and I'm just gonna reduce the brightness. And I'm gonna go to color balance. This is too green and the environment is blue. So I'm gonna go to the shadows. I'm gonna add some cyan and some blue. And in the highlights also some blue and some cyan. Maybe the midtones some cyan as well. But now it's too colorful compared to the sky. So I'm just gonna go to hue and saturation. And just reduce a little bit of the saturation of the photo. Okay, I'm gonna add actually some more here and there. I want the clouds to be overlapping more, but if you see, we can start seeing the edge. So I'm gonna unlink it and Control T, pull this one even down more. Also on the trees, I wanna add some. I don't want the trees to be that obvious. And they should disappear top. Okay, I guess now the relation between the sky and the down part is good enough. Let's jump to our next photo, the lighting. Okay, I'm gonna put it on top of curves. What I did here is a mistake. When I place a photo, it came in between this and the curves. And the curves was linked to the sky. Now it's linked to the lightning. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it up. Now the curves is not linked to anything. I'm going to hold alt and link it to the sky. Now we have our lightning here. I'm going to make it like something big like that. I want it to be going like on top of the house. I'm going to change it to screen. Of course, let's try flipping it horizontal. Yes, I want it to be something like that. Rasterize the layer. Uh, okay, I don't want this area here, so I'm gonna pull it from here and there. Oh, it's a little bit slow. Okay, I want the lightning edges to be just on my house. So now the problem is it's like we have some parts we don't want so i'm just gonna add layer mask and just using a brush i'm just gonna make sure it's black i'm just gonna paint on some areas to get rid of them and one thing i have to do is Control m which is the curves and i'll just increase the dark areas and reduce the bright areas a little bit it's too bright and even increase the dark areas more this will get rid of everything and leave only the whites. Okay, let's get rid of this part as well. <clears throat> then let me go with the round brush with low opacity. I'm just gonna fade it from the edges. Okay, one more thing we need to do here is very important is the color. This one's color is very into the red and magenta so i'm gonna press ctrl u then i'm gonna jump to colorize i want it to match the color behind of it which is this one and the opacity you can go like with highly saturated but it's not that saturated so i'm gonna go something like that you can make it even brighter or darker a little bit darker is good so now we have our lightning layer here it looks good actually let me just reduce the opacity and now we're we're done with this part Okay, let's play around with the house now. Okay, I'll just lock this one so I can, when I control and click, I get this layer easily. Now I'm gonna make a selection like that. Like it's coming out from the door of the house. This is where I want my light actually to be coming out. And I'm gonna create a new layer on top of it. Then I'm gonna jump to the gradient tool. I'm gonna pick this color maybe now this is the important part is that you will have it on linear dodge add what linear dodge add is that once you paint it paints with the normal color let me make a big one something like that it paints with the normal color but once you paint over it again it start dodging it making more look like it's light 
You can also use the circle one here at the end just to make sure it's like circle shape. Okay, so now we have our light, but it has some sharp edges. So I'm gonna increase its size a little bit so that I can go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and blur its edges. That's too strong. Yeah, that's good. Maybe even less. Something like that is good. And then using the eraser, I'm just gonna erase. First, I need to erase it from on top of this leaf because this is in the foreground. Let me try putting it to linear dodge. No, just leave it to normal. Something like that. Just get trying to get rid of the sharp edges because sharp edges are very unnatural in real world. Uh, I'm gonna actually add layer mask. The advantage of having a mask and like erasing using a mask is that if you make a mistake, you can go back and fix it. So now I don't want to lose this layer, so that's why I'm using the mask, just in case I make a mistake. Okay, I guess now the light looks good. But one thing I could do is, after I select it, I'll go again to the gradient, and with the linear dodge, I'm gonna sample now this color. But this is like... Oh, wait, I'm on the mask. I have to stand on the layer to be able to sample colors. This one is much brighter now. And again, with the linear dodge, I'm just gonna... I want to make, make it more like from bright to dark. Okay, now it's looking good. If you see when we zoom out, it looks good. We have some light here, and it's also affecting the grass. But the thing is, that light is not affecting the house. It should be coming from the inside, and this is glass, so it should be affecting the house. So I'm gonna stand on the house layer, add a new layer on top of everything. Then using a brush, I'm just gonna paint with that color here and there. And I'm gonna change it to overlay. Now the house have some of the color. Then I'm gonna press Ctrl J to duplicate it if I feel it's a little bit weak. Okay, this is too strong, so I'm just gonna lower the opacity of one of them. Then I'm gonna press Ctrl J again. And this one I'm gonna try putting it to screen. I don't know what I'm doing is gonna work or not. I'm gonna try different. Okay, color dodge looks good. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the eraser. And just erase all, leaving only this part. And I'm gonna do the same to this one that we made, the overlay one. Leaving only the front part here, because here where the light source is, it should look more light. Okay, now after I did this part, when I look at the sky, I feel the sky is too desaturated and too blue compared to this cyan. I wanna match everything together, so I'm just gonna press Ctrl U. If you look the blue here on the right, the cyan on the left, so I'm just gonna move this a little bit to the left, so it's more cyan, and just increase its opacity a little bit. So now the sky is matching this color. Let's do the same to the lighting, Control U. Let's move it to the left a little bit, and saturate it a little bit more. So now we have everything matching much more than before. Okay, the last thing is adding the model. This is, I'm gonna leave it up to you. I'm not gonna give you like the model. This is a robot I created before. I'm just gonna put it here. It's up to you. You can put whatever, like go creative, put whatever uh, model you want. But just the only things I'm gonna talk about is the shadow. You create a shadow opposite to the light and the lighting pass. If you look at it, just let me show you. Uh, all these are adjustments I made. Okay, if you see the lighting, I made it completely white when it's facing the light. So it looks like it's light from here. And I made some back, some black at the back. So it looks more realistic. And when we look from far away, it looks like it's really lit. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller, I guess. Okay, something like that. Uh... Just looking again at the sky. I kinda think it needs 
even more saturation i don't know if saturation will yeah saturation actually work nicely let's try colorize actually let's pick the color we want and let's saturate it yeah it's colorize worked better it gave it all the same color so it worked nicely okay now we're done with the compositing let's color grade everything let's jump to the gradient map let's try out i'm gonna try two colors let's try this one out actually i always like to try this one out to see how it looks like it adds like orange and orange to the highlights and magenta to the shadows but this one is a little bit blue like scene so i'm gonna try something maybe yellowish in the shadows and cyan in the highlights uh, i don't like the yellow let's try blue maybe magenta or red uh, i'll stick with the blue and the cyan okay blue and cyan are good let's see if it's like 100 percent this is what it does and here it adds some variation to the food okay let's jump to the curves it's the second way to color grade or let's not make it curves let's make it color balance actually let's jump to the shadows let's give the shadows a little bit of i don't know how. i always like to try and experiment to see which looks better which one like my eyes will like the most i didn't like any of the shadows so let's try the highlights giving it some cyan maybe let's try the blue in the highlights no some yellow let's put some magenta magenta and yellow and red okay oh no it doesn't look good i guess i did like already perfect color grading like whenever I add something, I guess this color grading is already good enough because whenever I add something, it feels like it's going off. So I'm just gonna go to the curves. And I'm just gonna do like, I want the highlights to be down, the whites up. And here the shadows and the blacks a little bit up. So we don't lose any like black areas here and there. This is what I made. And then I'll add another contrast layer. I decontrasted in this one. Now I'm going to contrast again. I always contrast by doing this. I pull the blacks up. Then I take the shadows, pull them a little bit down. And then I take the whites, make them brighter. This is my favorite way to like do the... This is the before. This is the after. And then we're also going to fix it a little bit in the camera row filter. I'm going to hold Control, Alt, Shift, then press E. It opens the, it merges everything into one layer. I'm going to jump to camera raw filter. <coughs> Just a little bit too slow. Okay, here we have the camera raw filter. I always like to play around with the clarity, which making either make things clear or unclear. I'll unclear things here, give it the soft look. Add a little bit of contrast, reduce highlights, add whites, increase shadows, reduce blacks. This is like my favorite way to edit photos. It makes, this is like my style actually. You can keep playing around until you find like the style that suits you the most. And then I jump to the FX module. I always like to haze and dehaze my photo. This one will actually like remove all the fog, make everything clear. This one will add fog. So I guess uh, we should try removing a little bit of the fog. Yes. Then vignette. This is a must. I always do it. It draws like a black circle around your photo. And I guess it's too dark. I'll increase the overall exposure a little bit. And I'm going to press OK. So this is the before and the after the camera low. That's it for today's tutorial. If you liked it, please make sure you press the like button, subscribe to the channel, and if you have any comments or any suggestions, make sure you put them in the comment section down below. Thank you.